Hello, hello. Hi. Welcome back to the lore through. Today we are taking down episode number 26, and I have a few things I wish to show you. First off, this is the Crepus. Yeah, the Crepus Black Key crossbow that we got in the round table hold. I noticed today that it has a sword and twin serpent icon on the top of it. Like, I assume that the bowstring goes under it, but it could go on top of Actually, yeah, it's on top of it. So the bowstring's on top of this silly icon. And I'm wearing the confessor chest piece to show off that that's the same icon that they have on the back there. So they really like this icon for the confessors of the round table hold. But, uh, Dory, I won't be wearing that. I just wanted to show that off. And we're going to do the rooftop circuit today, like I promised. We'll try to show off the buckler as well. I am miserable at buckler parries. They're a little different than other small shield parries. And the nice thing about crossbows is you could fire them one-handed. shield aside. I'll parry somebody with a sword instead. But uh, crossbows are nice because you can load them, switch away, switch back, and they stay loaded. There we go. Crossbows are very helpful. Uh, they scale only with upgrade levels, so not so good late game early game they can be very useful very handy i think it's good that everyone in their build has some sort of object to pull enemies whether it be throwing knives or some form of crossbow you don't even have to upgrade the cro upgrade the crossbow if your whole purpose is just to pull enemies i want to show off the then i thought there's another enemy over here okay i want to show off the buckler parry here's the castus this is a running heavy into heavy Used to be a combo. Let's see if we can get ourselves a headshot for some bonus damage. There we go. I used the perfumer bolts that we got from those uh, pages in the Weeping Peninsula. They explode a little bit on contact. Come on, I want to parry this one. Off. There we go. So the buckler parry looks a little different. Uh, if I remember, it has a similar window to small shields. I think it has a little more, uh, startup. Maybe it's less, I forget which. But they're similar. The timing's slightly off, but the window for the actual parry is about the same. That's a little bit of the castus. You can wield two of them. Um, in patch 1.08. Not this patch, this is 1.09. The Castus and other punch weapons were very good. They had upgraded their poise damage. And so as a result, if you were to do a running heavy into a heavy, and the initial running heavy broke the enemy's, uh, like another player's poise, and so they stumbled, then the heavy would connect. So it meant that a lot of the time, it was a true combo. Well, true combo is probably not the right word. It would combo often, I should say. And they removed that in patch 1.09. Now it's, uh, they lowered its poise damage. So it doesn't stumble things nearly as much. Let me find a stone sword key. Uh, what else do I need to show off for today? Um, we did see an enemy with the heavy crescent moon axe, so we could show that off. Why not? We are chunky rolling. There we go. I am going to buff this thing. Because 360 AR... 386 AR is very tasty. Here we have a different Warhawk. I should probably show it off, but it has a, a mask on it and a bladder underneath its chin that's, wouldn't you guessed it, filled with fire or some fuel for flames. Give it a good old wild strikes. It also has those blades on its feet. Oh, good. Its body lingered so we can take a better look at it. But yeah, it has uh, the falconry holes in its hood. It has... I assume that's the delivery device, is that tube. And that's got littler tubes there connected to the bladder. Bizarre how they decided that these birds needed to be these war machines with flamethrowers and blades. 
the dozing cross legged emote. A little courtyard with a fog wall and a tree. And here we see a very unique church building. We will be visiting this soon. But it has those same kind of studded steeples we saw at the Chapel of Anticipation. Wouldn't you know it looks like a little church? It has those uh, greenish statues, probably like a copper that's oxidized. Maybe a little too dark for that. And, yeah, it looks like, what are those, three leaf clovers? Trifoils? Trefoils? That might be called a trefoil. There's all sorts of icons and designs that have unique words, and I just don't know all of them. But yeah. Back here, we find ourselves a smithing stone. I think it's interesting that this fellow is reaching up and froze in that position. Actually, given the way his head's tilted, I bet he was looking up at the Erd Tree, so I wonder if he saw it in his last moments and was reaching up in its general direction. Here we have a colossal chasm. There's even some roots there at the bottom we could barely see. Alright. More rooftops. Exciting. Okay. Let's see here. Some fellows over here. Oh, we were noticed. And a convenient backstab. He kicked us. He did damage. I wish our kicks did damage. That'd be very nice. Okay. We have a very lengthy ladder. Gives us a good view of much of the castle. Getting close to the heart, but I just can't imagine the amount of gold ornamentation like you would need to harvest and then craft like the amount of workmen you would need artisans just to get this place to be as ornate as it is okay head back down the ladder now let's take a look at that talisman we just found so we found the Claw Talisman. A talisman depicting a claw and an assassin enhances jump attacks. The assassins of Ravenmount are killers by trade. They assail their victims while dressed as birds of prey. So it'll be a little bit before we see anything regarding them, but it's, uh, it's one of those instances where a faction is referenced once or twice and isn't really in much else of the game, which is a shame. Oh yeah, and showing off that this Crescent Axe, it's got these nice sweeping attacks. Which is very different from the Long Haft Axe we have. Because it just has these big lumbersome sweeps and chops. Uh, it's kind of like the difference between the Claymore and the Iron Greatsword. And the B Banished Knight Greatsword that has these nice sweeping attacks. In fact, we'll show that off briefly on an enemy up here. I should probably try to parry him. Miserable. Give me another go. There we go. Okay, and up here we have another item. Shiny. It's purple, showing it's of a rarer quality. Nomadic Warrior Cookbook 10. Wrong tab. Okay, that's 18. 10. It lets us make storm wing bone arrows. So if we could get some more storm feathers from those warhawks, we could make a fancier physical damage arrow. Yeah, I think we'll do we'll do this courtyard. 
Why not? There's a fellow down here. He's now gone. And we find the wooden great shield. Wooden great shield reinforced with metal ornamentation. Great shields boast high damage negation and guard capacity, making enemy attacks easy to repel. This one's bad. Just straight up. Its guard boost is 56. The breast shield has 58. Upgraded a handful of times. Doesn't have 100% block. I guess if you really needed a really light great shield, this would be your pick. If you put barricade shield on it, it would probably be very serviceable. But you might be better off using the turtle shield. I forget how much guard boost it has, but uh... Oh yeah, we found the spiked palisade shield in Kalid. A large wooden shield covered in spikes. Though relatively light, it lacks in damage negation. Designed to perform shield bashes, these attacks riddle the enemy with holes, earning it the nickname of Pard Shield. Makes me wonder what the word Pard means in this context. Oh no. Okay. So we will attempt to use this shield. I'm going to sneak through this courtyard a little bit because I want the side of grace up ahead. Just in case. Save us a lot of time should I perish in the fight. Here we have another storeroom for banished knight goods. Halberds, shields, armors, the like. Boy, I was hoping you'd take a moment longer. The nice thing about this enemy is that he doesn't go up these stairs. Oh, never. I just... Usually he doesn't go up these stairs. He has a hard time going up and down them. Usually go around. There we go. He's dealt with. Ooh. But he's covered in all these stumps. Almost like he's had horns that were sawn down to the base of his flesh, like Margit the Fell Omen that we saw earlier. There we go. And he has a giant cleaver. In fact, we have such a cleaver that I gathered beforehand to look at. Looks like a, a rough piece of iron. Almost got a Damascus-like print on the side of the blade there. It's wrapped in this really coarse-looking cloth, right? Looking at it. Heavy blade curved sword of colossal size. It is not actually in the colossal category. It's in the great curved sword, or the curved great sword category. Awarded to Omen as a tool of war. This weapon is made to take advantage of brute strength. The pattern etched upon the blade is the remnant of a decorative malediction. Indeed, when bestowing a weapon, preparations must be made for taking it away. So... Something about Omen, because that's the name of the weapon, Omen Cleaver. Omen seem to be some sort of second-class citizen. They are very strong, given weapons with the intent to take them away, right? They have horns. Sometimes they're sawn off. Sometimes they are left. It's hard to tell why. He's covered in chains, rags. But if he's anything like Margaret the Fell, perhaps he possesses a modicum of intelligence. So, going here. There's a painting, another one. I believe this is our second painting. This one depicts Stormvale from a very long ways away. There's some stone in the way. In fact, it looks like it's from south, honestly. Maybe even the Weeping Peninsula. So if we can go there, we can grab that item. I will try to remember. I usually don't remember the paintings because most of them don't have very good rewards. Here we see another barricade with the icon of the hawk. So we're seeing hawks. We've seen lions. Seen Erd Tree Reliefs. I don't know if we have seen uh, the dragon banners like we saw in the... Uh, Fridge Folk Hero's Grave. We may not have found that just yet. Okay. Alright. So. I'm trying to debate what to challenge next. I kind of don't want to kill the omen again. 
And we'll run through the courtyard here. So there's tons of soldiers here. Loads and loads of them. Guarding stuff. But I found a pike and a smoldering butterfly. I am fat rolling, which is a horrible idea. Try pick up stuff. <laughs> the guy with the torch bowl hit the fire barrels. It's so funny. Okay. Show off a curved grade circus. So I don't believe I've had opportunity to just yet. Even on a uh, running heavy, the take two hits. But uh, curved grade swords can be good weapons. They made them a little faster in the most recent updates, so they're better than they've ever been. Drop something a little lighter, and with that spiked palisade shield, we can shield bash, which uh, accumulates bleed. Come on, keep mashing the roll button, but my inputs. Now oh, that one was on me. All right. Okay. Doing this little side area now. Gonna want to prepare for the worst. Tasty 374 AR. And here we see another grafted scion. down, get crit, and we are much stronger than when we first fought one. We can take some hits and deal them back. Okay, so we find ourselves in this room, we see lion banners and limbs hanging from the ceiling, chandeliers, broken tables, this looks like it may have been a great hall for eating at one point. There's reliefs depicting, wouldn't you believe it, the sword and saint statues that we saw on the Saints Bridge in Limgrave. So many icons and a large painting of a man with an axe, an axe we know to be an icon of the Golden Lineage, and Sarosh, the counselor. Now this fellow looks like Horolu. We saw a painting of him in the Round Table Hold, right? And we know he looks a little bit like Horolu, one of the tarnished coming back to the lands between from the opening cinematic. He's got that axe there. It looks regal. To be in such a momentous place, it makes me wonder if this is not Godric. We don't know just yet. We haven't seen Godric, but if this is an ancestor of him. It's not Godwin. We know Godwin's clean-shaven from the cinematic. Highland axe. So it makes me think that this is Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. Or it's Horolu. It's hard to say. Why Horolu would be in such uh, prominence it doesn't make much sense, but both Horolu and this figure looked a little bit similar and both had a white lion over their shoulders, so. We'll see. Uh, side room. Okay, so here we have one of these statues of the lady holding the jug, the libation statues. Could be Queen Merica herself, as indicated by the Erdtree Favor Talisman. Yeah. Said that when the age of the Erdtree began, such blessings were personally bestowed upon their recipients by Queen Merica herself. With plenty of stone sword keys. Oh no. Botched my attack. Goodbye. Okay, this is a good room. We find the iron wet blade. Very good key item. All the wet blades are very helpful. 
not to everyone's build, but uh, across the board. <clears throat> so we see it's got some of that uh, script on the side that kind of looks like the Cypher Pata punch holy weapon we found her, uh, a couple episodes ago. And that's the script of the two fingers, right? Iron wet blade with a cipher engraved can be used as a whetstone knife. When applying an infinity using an ash of war, the additional infinity of heavy, keen, and quality can be chosen. So before we were restricted based on what affinity came with the ash of war, right? Hot crest wooden shield. Misericord. <clears throat> but now we can apply physical uh, ashes of or infusions to our weapons regardless of what the base one is for that ash of war. So we have a couple items to look at now. Highland Axe. Oh, and the Pike. A long spear featuring an, featuring an especially lengthy blade. Specialized for use from long distances, it boasts the longest reach of any melee weapon. Incredibly useful even against foes on horseback, but hard to wield in cramped spaces. So sure enough, it's long. It's a real long boy. Very helpful, though. Its heavy attack is this up strike, which isn't useful in too many situations. But if you're ever fighting something taller than you and big, this can be very nice for poking it in the belly. There's a couple bosses like that. Like the uh, Ancestor Spirit we fought. This would have been nice to fight him with. That attack in particular. The Highland Axe, single-sided axe used by the warriors of the Highlands. Brave combatants begin battle by crying out their names. Roars are enhanced by this weapon. So if we have a war... Uh, Ash of War, like Warcry, that changes our heavy. This can also give a boost to that ore. Um, there's other roars that we can get. We haven't seen them yet, but other roars we can get. Hawk Crest Wooden Shield. A tall, medium-sized wooden shield, light for its size and easy to handle, adorned, adorned with the long-forgotten crest of Stormvale, ancient in design. And it's got a hawk on it, right? So interesting. So ancient, almost forgotten, is the hawk of Stormvale. So, that doesn't seem, it seems very different from the beast and tree sigils, the lion and the tree sig uh, signs that we've seen on banners around that seem to be the signs of Godric. Botch that. Just wanted to poke him with the pike. Look how long it is. Poking him from around the corner. Now let's take a look at them as record. Dagger favored by military physicians in white. The pointed blade is hard and sharp, making critical hits especially potent. Medicine is mercy, and mercy upon the battlefield is ruthless. Beware the killer's cloth as men of compassion. And so if we were to equip this dagger and take a good old look at it, it is a tri-edged dagger, triple-edged dagger. Um, I mean, it's got its two other edges, but it's like a, a triangular wedge shape. shape. Meaning it's very much meant for thrusting, not so much slashing. So, thrusting is the ideal with this dagger. Okay. I need to show off Storm Assault before I forget, so. Okay. Alright. So, the hawk is a long forgotten and ancient symbol of this castle. That's good to note. Kind of showing the iconographic replacement that is going on here. We have an elevator here that goes up to the uh, Rampart Tower. We're going to send it up just so we have access to that for later. And here we have some dogs. And we can use Storm Assault on them. I did a little too close to the target. But uh, it stuns on startup and on the end point for the end part of the attack. I hate these dogs so much. So much. Mumble Flesh. The Chrysalid's Memento. We heard that r word from the maiden in the uh, shack, the Stormhill shack. So we should probably bring that to her when given an opportunity. I'll look for a good ending point so I don't have to come back through this area and re-kill everything. Bunch of fellows waiting for dinner. We're here to ruin that. Put him down. Some more kitchens. Exalted flesh.
He had his shield up, so he was able to block most of that. <laughs> Banish Knight in there. And a fellow through this locked door that we can't open. Ooh, that worked well. And we find his chest piece. Another one. Alright. So this is an interesting room because we see these narrow tree banners. And look. Dragon banners. Worn with time. A tree relief. Not as wide as other tree reliefs we've seen. Paintings of banished knights. Apparently each one was around. A painting of a hawk. There's hawk statues. Got some nice wood furnishings here on the side. Seem to be depicting anything I can immediately recognize. They're very detailed nonetheless. And here we have a treasure chest. To open that up. <clears throat> it's the Mimic's Veil, right? Oh, it's a use item, of course. Um, there. Golden Veil of Intricate Design uses FP to mimic nearby objects. When Godric was hounded from Landell, the royal capital, this was one of the multitude of treasures he took with him, also known as Merica's Mischief. So we know that uh, <clears throat> Godric the Grafted was chased away from Landell in some capacity, and Kenneth Height reveals that he hid amongst the women folk to do so. Right? And this veil allows us to mimic things in our environment. So here we have become a barricade very out of place in this uh, stately room. We can move a little bit. It looks so silly. <laughs> but yeah, so you can hide his stuff in the environment. That's mostly useful for other players, but it might have been the means by which Godric was able to fight, hide amongst the women folk when he escaped. Definitely getting a uh, mesh of cultures here. And uh, the only ones that seem allied are the beast and the tree for certain. The dragons could be their own faction. The hawks could be their own faction. But, uh... This seems like an older part of the castle, right? <clears throat> this relief makes me think that whoever originally owned the castle, likely the faction of the stormhawks... They had some belief in the Erd Tree, right? Hard to say. These banners could be newer, but they're also worn with time. So we know for certain that the Beast and the Erd Tree are aligned. But it makes me wonder if perhaps the War, uh, the Stormhawk faction believed in maybe the Great Tree before it became the Erd Tree. Maybe that's what these narrow banners we see on the sides of the room are depicting like that one all the way over there right what if this narrow tree is uh depicting not the Erd tree but the great tree maybe we need to pay attention to how the trees are shown maybe thin tree versus wide tree will be the difference between the great tree of old and the Erd tree of the era we know but uh things to keep an eye out for not certain that could be a leap in judgment Hopefully we can find more to substantiate these rampant thoughts of mine. Oh, where we killed those dogs below. Heap of bodies. And a troll. And, uh... The troll's missing a leg and an arm. And we know the scions, the golden grafted scions, that they are a hodgepodge of limbs thrown together. So it makes me worry. Worry about what all has been thrown together. Okay. Okay, grab that. Gold pickled foul foot. To go on the roofs briefly. So over here we have it looks like some lions statues, but they're made of gold. So it leads me to suspect they were added afterwards with a later group of people who took over the castle. Even the banner. Oh, there's all the ballistas we saw earlier. Up the ladder. 
So I'm just trying to piece together the layers of what's going on here. I'm trying to see if we can see over there. Not really. We'll get closer to that at another point. Up and down here. Another one of these soldiers. He is blocking these doors that we can now open. Him on his moving way. Here we can grab the pickled turtleneck and the stone sword key. All right, we're running out of time. Kind of want to end it end it on a good note. So let's go say hi to one more character. Uh, a character to talk to, I should state. There we go. <clears throat> Running through the castle, picking up stuff. Lots of little things. Money to line our pockets, mostly. are oh he's not pleased with us but we can give him a taste of his own medicine there we go that went well so we can actually get up on to this church building here with this ladder over there on that wall is where I demonstrated uh, the fire arrows on the barrel toting hawks as well as Gravitas. All right, we can see one over there. Here is some um, Kukri. We can get into the church through here. So there's two ways to go in the church. This is where the dungeon kind of links into itself again. We should probably start at the outside, right? Of this church building. There's a lot to look about, uh, a lot to talk about. So there we see a four leaf design. These nice peaked archways. This is a very different architecture from everything else we've seen leading me to believe that this may have been built a tad later though I don't think it was added as late as the gold furnishings it makes me think it was uh, added after the hawk the storm hawk group of people were conquered because they seem to have been here first right and they was conquered once this was built and later when maybe even when Godric showed up the gold ornamentation seems to be added I mean it we have seen lions made out of that gold or, uh, ornamentation, and the lion is a sign of the golden lineage, so very possible. Some banners hung up depicting said golden lineage again. I wanted starlight. There we go. And here we have... Oh, there's another picture. Oh, it's dark. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I want to look at that painting. I don't recognize that painting. Let me see it. Okay, so there we have again the man with the axe and the lion behind him even has an arm going over his shoulder. That's got to be Godfrey the First Elden Lord. The man looks regal. He's got the lion, the sign of, or he's got the Counselor Sirach behind him. Godric the Grafted has been described to us as a disappointment in a country bubkin. There's no way that's him. Can't be. And above the door, we see another one of the reliefs of the women with jugs. In fact, now that we see it in a little bit better lighting, almost all of them have jugs. Which makes me think that, uh... Let's see. It was said that when the Age of the Earth Tree began, such blessings were personally bestowed upon the recipients by Queen Merica. Special blessing of the Earth Tree. So if Queen Merica is more of a recent development in terms of the huge scape of this world, right? This is her era. And there's an era before her. It makes me wonder if perhaps there was some method of bestowing blessings. And she replaced that practice herself. We have seen 
that there is a baptismal church. Yeah, the Cal Kalu Baptismal Church on the Weekly Peninsula. So they seem to have some concept of it. Maybe those are linked. Maybe these jugs were bestowing blessings or baptisms. Sort of christening. And it makes me wonder if Queen America showed up and took control of that uh, process to kind of give herself an authority lending to the previous era, but uh, gaining power for herself in some capacity. And we see these statues of women pouring out jugs all over the outside of the church building. Uh, they're way up there. There they are. Very hard to see from this angle. I've seen it from other angles, though. So it seems to me that... Yeah. There's more reliefs in these doors. They're the narrow ones. So who knows, but the... Just trying to identify all of the cultures that might be going on here. So we have Godric's culture, the most recent that's here inhabiting the castle. We have the hawk culture of old. We have the saint and tree culture, which may be linked to the hawk culture, right? They have similar uh, architecture, it seems. And the uh, hawk culture seems to have something to do with Castle Morn as well. They had those same uh, barricades there with the hawks all over them, though. This place has the actual hawk statues. That place didn't. Perhaps they could have been moved from here at to Castle Morn. Hard to say. But uh, the architecture of the bridge, of the Saints Bridge, seems consistent with the architecture of the base of Stormvale Castle, as well as the Chapel of Anticipation and the uh, Castle Morn, right? So it leads me to suspect, if I'm going to simplify and kind of cut down everything I'm talking about into simpler terms, I'm going to say that the Sword and Saint culture, right, was here first. And one of their, uh, one of their, maybe a branch or maybe a, a section of their culture, their civilization, is the Stormhawk Castle here at Stormvale, right? This is a part of it. Uh, it may not have exceeded beyond this castle or this region, right? But uh, we've seen sort of sword and saint statues all over the place. <clears throat> and later, they were conquered and... I don't know. They were conquered at least... At least by Godric most recently. Possibly by somebody else in between. I'll flesh that out more, but uh, let's put it simply with my rambling thoughts. Sword and Saint, the Sword Saint uh, civilization existed here first, has something to do with the Hawk culture, and later Godric showed up and dropped all, dropped all of his icons everywhere. In here, see more of those beast banners, right? And this church is that first culture that showed up after the Saint and Tree and Hawk era, right? This church was built. I believe that this church may have been built when Lord Godfrey conquered these lands initially. And the reason I say that... Well, I guess I don't have a whole lot for that just yet. Maybe it wasn't Lord Godfrey. Maybe it was just... Uh, some caricature during the Crucible era, mostly because of this statue here. So if you've ever seen a tree that's been chopped off till it's just a stump and allowed to grow, it shoots up all of these sprouts all over the place as it's trying to survive. So this chaotic energy, very reminiscent of the Crucible we've heard time and time again. We have this fellow who has these little sprouts and then these larger sprouts. But this fellow, oh, man, wish I had uh, put my notes together a little better for this part. This is going to be a long, rambling episode. But yeah, so Sword and Saint Tree era, something to do with the Warhawks. Conquered initially, somebody built this church here, right? Very nice looking church, probably the Chapel of Anticipation as well. And they had something to do with the Crucible. 
which was the era right before the Earth Tree. And then Godric came along later with his beast and tree iconography that he put all over the place. So there seems to be at least three eras going on here. Now, I can't wait till we learn more about the Crucible era and what it's linked to. It seems that there was a great tree. Something happened to the great tree to chop it off at the base. And it started to... Uh, that led to the Crucible era before the Erd Tree where these root sprouts would be growing out of the base of the great tree. And at some point, the Erd Tree was grafted to the top of that tree. So we have at least three distinct eras for the tree. The Great Tree, the Crucible, and then the Erd Tree. And the Crucible is known as the early uh, the early Erd Tree, I believe. Let's look at that uh, item description again for the Crucible. This is a manifestation of the Erd Tree's primal vital energies and aspect of the primordial Crucible, where all life was once blended together. So perhaps the Erd Tree was grafted into the stump of the Great Tree. And that Erd tree in its earliest form was referred to as the Crucible. Okay. Well, here's Rogier the Sorcerer again. He showed up for the Margit fight. Let's talk to him. And then we'll cut the episode. Ah, nice to meet you. The pleasure's mine. Rogier is the name. A sorcerer, as uh, you might have guessed. I'm looking for a little something here in the castle. When I'm not hot-footing it from the troops, that is. But enough about me. What are you doing here? Stormvale Castle. This place is bristling with tarnished hunters, you know. They sacrifice our kind for grafting. Not exactly a place I'd stroll into without a purpose in mind. I'm here to defeat Godric. I see. Here to challenge Godric and lay your hands upon a great rune, are you? You can see it then, I take it. The guidance of grace. Well, enjoy it while you can. I'm tarnished, like you. But, unlike you, I've seen neither hide nor hair of this guidance for the longest time. Still, I won't forget how it felt when I first came here, to the lands between. I'm privy to a few magical battle arts. Would you care to learn one? As a fellow tarnished, once guided by grace, I'd love to help you out, if it please. Sure, why not? Since we want to be a sorcerer, these will be an excellent opportunity for us to put magic on weapons. So we have Glenstone Pebble. This Ash of War grants an armament, the magic affinity, and the following skill, Glintstone Pebble, skill that employs the Glintstone Sorcery of the same name. Follow up with a strong attack to chain this skill into a lunging thrust performed while the armament is still imbued with Glintstone. Usable on swords as well as pull arms, capable of thrusting colossal weapons accepted. Uh, let's see. Carrion Greatsword, Carrion Royal Prestige embodied in the skill, transforms a transform blade into a magical greatsword and swing it down, can be charged to increase its power. Spinning weapon, defensive skill employed by Carrion Princesses, lifts armament into midair, then makes it spin violently. The, those it touches will suffer successive attacks. And that's a good one, I think, to put on bleed weapons, honestly, because it can hit multiple times really quickly. All right. We will grab all of those. So thank you, Rashir. The battle art you've learned is of the Glintstone family. They were conceived at the Great Academy of Rhea Lucaria, to the north of this castle. Okay, so the Academy of Rhea Lucaria is to the north, in Lyurnia. The Golden Order, or so I'm told. Fascinating, isn't it? That the Golden Order was pliable enough to absorb practices that contradicted itself in the past. With the Order broken, twisted, and in need of repair, such adaptability is more important now than ever. So it seems that at one point in time, the Academy of Rail Lucaria was at odds with the Golden Order, the royal capital in Lane Dell. And yet, they seem to have been absorbed. It seems that uh, Lord Godfrey, First Elden Lord, and Queen Merica, they conquered a lot of cultures. We saw through various statues, or the stone sword monuments, that Godfrey at least led one crusade down here south of Landell. and there's a chance that the golden order also conquered Lyurnia at some point as well but uh we don't know too much about that just a barest hint that they were absorbed oh, keen to learn another battle. okay and he has nothing more to say okay so next time we get to finish off uh stormvale castle it should be a pretty straight shot 
but that'll be exciting. We get to learn a little bit more about the, the castle. Maybe I can put my timeline into order. We may need more items before this becomes fresh. A lot of this is terribly organic, so I appreciate you being with me today and putting up with my ramblings. I hope you have a good one, and bye bye